Hi, I'm Lynn Clark and I'm a master's student at Derry Galway. Today I'm going to show you how to change the design of your site using a custom theme in CSS. I'm going to demonstrate with a site that I'm building for the International Semantic Web Conference. I start off with a Photoshop document most of the time. I find it's a lot easier to get my ideas down in Photoshop and then apply them. But you can also just work directly with your CSS. Now I'm not actually going to build this theme from scratch. I'm going to use what's called a starter theme. Starter themes have been packaged by people in the Drupal community and they are base files of CSS and templates that are standards compliant that you can use to get yourself up and running a lot more quickly. I like to start with a theme called Zen. It gives you a lot of great classes which you can use CSS with. It also is standards compliant and it has really great documentation. You can download Zen using Drush, the Drupal shell, or you can just download it from the drupal.org website. So once you've downloaded Zen, it should be in your Sites All Themes folder. And inside of Zen, you'll see there's a Starter Kit folder. This is how you can create sub-themes. You use Starter Kit to create sub-themes. You'll find a README in here that gives you directions on how to get your sub-themes started. So just go ahead and do the instruction, follow the instructions in the README to get your sub-theme going, and I'll show you what it's supposed to look like once you have your sub-theme there. So now that you've finished all the steps in the README, if you go to Appearance in your site, you'll find your custom theme is listed in the Disabled Themes. What you want to do is enable and set default. Now when you go back and refresh the page, you'll see that the base Zen styles are being used for your page in the base Zen template. What we're going to do now is change some of those CSS styles to make your site look a little bit better, a little bit more customized. When I'm working with CSS styles, I like to use a program called CSS Edit. What it allows you to do is look at your site in the browser and see exactly what the styles that you're putting into your CSS files are doing to your site. I'm going to start styling my site by adding the backgrounds for the body and for the page. I'm going to do this by opening up the CSS file page backgrounds. Since I'm using CSS Edit, I'm actually going to open an existing file and override it. But if I was just using a text editor, all I need to do is open the page backgrounds file and edit it directly. So let's go back and look at the backgrounds that we want to add to this site. Here on the entire site, we have this background image that we want to add. So to do that, we go to the body element and add styles to that. We can add an image by using the URL. And this gives us a start, but it's not quite what we wanted. Uh, I want to add something that makes it so that the text isn't directly on this background, so that it stands out on a white background. But I'm not sure which of these elements, the page wrapper or the page, I should add that white background to. So I'm going to use the X-ray inspector and just see what my elements on this page are. So if I go here and look at the page wrapper, that actually looks like the area that I want to use the white background for. So I'm going to go ahead and add my white background to the page wrapper. So now we go back and look at it. And it looks nice with the white background, but there's still something a little bit off. We don't have the picture really on the sides. We have part of the picture, but not the part we want. What we want to do is go ahead and horizontally center that image so that the center always shows up right behind the center of the page. And we want to move the top of the image to the top of the browser window. So now that looks pretty nice. I can see that the image is properly aligned behind the page. The only thing I can't see in CSS Edit is that it's now repeating across the length and height of the page. So what I want to put in here is just a directive that says no repeat. And I also want to add a background color that sits behind this image so that at the edges it bleeds out into that color. So now this is looking pretty good. But when I go back to the page, I see that the text is coming all the way up to the edge here. 
And I don't really, really like that. I like to have a little bit of white space around the text on my pages. So what I'm going to do is actually go to a different style sheet. This time I'm going to go to Layout Fixed. And I'm going to override that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the page selector here. And I'm going to add some padding to it, just around the edge there. And that actually looks pretty good at first glance. But if I look over here, I see that it's actually pushed this content all over to the side. This is because I added 40 pixels of padding, but I didn't actually reduce the width of the content area as it's defined in the CSS. So I want to go ahead and do that. This is where Zen does get a little complex. There's different widths for content depending on whether there's one sidebar, two sidebars, or no sidebars. So because I've added 20 pixels padding to each side of the page, I want to go ahead and decrease the content width by 40 pixels in each of these cases. Now you see this has fixed that problem. But we're not quite done yet. There are comments here that give us directions about the margins that go along with these content widths. And we want to make sure that we have, in all four of these areas, that we've corrected those margins as well. So we're off to a pretty good start here. We have the padding around the page and we have our background. Now let's take a look at the design again. Here we have a header image and we want to add this too. So we're going to go back here and go back to our page backgrounds. And here's a header section. We can go ahead and add our background there. But we don't see the entire image there. That's because we need to add a height. And once again, we're going to switch over to our layout fixed CSS file because Layout Fix contains all of the dimensions of your layout, whereas the page backgrounds just contains the backgrounds. So I put the height as 200 pixels because that's how high my image is. If I change it to 220, you'll see that the image repeats again below itself. We want to make sure that this doesn't happen, so we're going to add no repeat there. So now that we have the header image in there, it's time to put in our logo. Instead of putting in the logo using CSS, we're actually going to go to our site and go to the Appearance tab and then click on Settings for our custom theme. We can uncheck where it says Use the Default Logo and upload a logo image. Now when we go back and look at it, our logo is showing up. We want to add a little bit of a margin around the logo, so we're going to go to pages.css. We don't use layout fixed because that's only for the major elements of your page, like your sidebar, your content, your header. But for the logo, you'll use pages. So when we get to the logo, we can just change the margin there, and that looks pretty good. So already you have a pretty good theme going. You can do a lot just with CSS without actually having to change any of the template files in Drupal. So try playing around and see what you can do.